loves me y'all. He cares for me He looks at me as a rock Y'all have to get a catch yourself Because somebody has been trying The enemy has tried to bring you down more But you catch yourself All the way up to a place of victory In the Lord Say that I am God's treasure I don't need your want To confirm or form me All I need is the word of God And I'm going to stand I'm going to stand I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to stand because I'm going to see the great salvation of the living God. So the enemy tried to slay me, but yet the word of God lives inside of me. It's this hope of glory that I shine forth in the face of adversity. As a matter of fact, my light, which is the light of his love, is a woman. The whole space around me. So no matter what the devil tried to do to me because of the light of his salvation that is illuminating inside of me, the devil is blind right now. He cannot see. As a matter of fact, he got on some shades and sunglasses because I'm radiating so bright this morning. Preaching good, we, 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 we look at this earthen vessel, and when Paul was writing this to the people of Corinth, uh, ministry leaders were dealing with all kind of position. And I say this to you as leaders that because of who God made you to be, there's always going to be opposition. There's always going to be something that you're attacking your way through. And, 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 and he did not want man to fall into their own frailty. He didn't want them to get weak in their own strength. So he had to encourage them in the Lord and say that though the enemy might try to split you, though the enemy is trying to come at you and discourage you and bring you down and make you feel like you have no hope, you got a treasure inside of you. You are something serious. God, I love that. I better say that again. You are something serious. And, and we don't always recognize that. That I am something serious. Jesus. I can't help it. She can be a woman. Of the brother, look at them. 
They don't even understand how powerful the blood is. Look at them walking around with that head down, all guilty, sitting there guilty as charged. Did you not free them from the blood of Jesus? By your blood? Did you not cancel out all of that debt? Well, why don't they see themselves as something serious? And so the leaders here recognized what Paul was talking about when he said the vessel is kind of frail. Mm -hmm. It's fragile. That, that what's inside of it is worth more than what is holding it. No, no, no. Come, on. Come on. Because the outside can easily be shaken. Yeah. <laughs> but what's in the inside never loses its value. Come on. The only time gold will lose its value is that when there is a low need for gold. Ah. And people don't need much gold anymore. Yes. But, but when Paul wrote this, the value of the precious gems was worth so much. So he had to let them know that, yes, the vessel is fragile. It can crumble at any time. But if the vessel recognizes what it holds inside of it, it won't go. Yeah. So, so if I realize what I got inside of me, I will not fall under pressure. Even though I know that I am an earthen vessel. Because that's what the Word of God said, earthen vessels. Built from the dirt of the ground, but yet have a resource in them that is so much greater than what the vessel was made of. That all the vessel have to do is yield to the resource that's inside of it, and the strength of the resource will be that which holds up the vessel. Yeah. But we falter because we don't realize. The substance that we are made of. Come on, teach us, come on, teach. Good teach. We we allow the words and the associations of others to define how strong and how mighty and how powerful we are. Yes. But if we would just look in the Word and find the Word of God to come forth and be our resource. Man, we wouldn't have so many broke down seats. Oh, right now, come on. I, I, I'm sorry, I just have to put it out there. Yeah. Because we struggle, we are in need of so much, and we are so rich. Yes, 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 yes. yes. There is so much wealth in this room. But the thing about it is, where we are right now, based on our economic situation, has defined how valuable we are. Until we're making the six figures, and once we make the six figures, then we want to get into the millions and the billions and the trillions. That's all and well because I am a multi-millionaire. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. I am. I'm still in the spirit. I am. One of the most wealthiest commodities yeah. is standing up in this church right now. Yeah. And it is not based on my address, 7926. It is not based on the link in this right there. It's based on what's inside of me. As a matter of fact, you cannot put a price tag on this. As a matter of fact, no matter what promotion I get at the VA, it can never exceed how God has promoted me in the spirit yeah. and his glory. Somebody, yeah. that. Somebody, somebody is worried about their finances this morning. This is a, a commercial break right now. And the power of the Holy Spirit. You're worried about the bills and you really don't have enough to pay everything right now. 
and you're wondering who can you go to leave me somebody? Jesus. Can you give them credit? And I owe you, I owe, I will owe you when I get it. I don't know when I'm gonna get it. I will owe you when I get it. Jesus. Jesus. And and the richest resource is right inside of you, which is the word of God, and you have the word inside of you. Then by faith, you can please God as his treasure. By faith, you can please God as his treasure. So if I have the word inside of me, and my bills are stacked up like this, and so I leave them in a room and I just walk in another room. Come on, Dad. I no longer answer the phone because they call them that too. Somehow they figured out what my cell phone number is. And they call me that too. But if I have the faith to please God, that I can speak from this urban fragile body here and bring out the treasure of his word. And I can say, Lord, you made me the lender and not the borrower. So this debt has to be canceled now. See, see, uh, uh, about this time next year, y'all mark this day, what is it, June the 3rd, 2019, y'all will see me running around in this church like I am one that is left out of my mind. As a matter of fact, it will manifest before June 3rd, 2020. Because I need a right now word to manifest so that I believe can believe what kind of treasure I am to God. I, I, I've been fired up. I've been listening to this, this teaching over and over and over again by Dr. Bill Winston who talks about how we are so inadequate in our abilities to believe God and knowing that we are in the kingdom of God. We are living in the kingdom of God and our king is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords and own everything. And yet we walk around like we're paupers, like we don't have a right. I am a son of the king. Whatever's in the king's kingdom, I have a rightful ownership to everything that God has. I didn't mean to go there, but I guess. So, uh, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, and 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, uh, uh, the Greek word of uh, this earthen vessel signifies shells of fish, which is a philo which the Jews compare to the human body. When I look at the shell of the fish, and I look at the pearls, and how fragile the shell is, but yet, mm. y'all see I'm holding my pearls, these are real. Mm. They're, in a, they're in a fragile shell that covers a fish. Uh, come on now. But yet, pearls are worth so much more than the shell. Come on. So when I look at us, these bodies, but we got the word of God in us, that our word is so much more than what our out or man looks like. Uh, okay. In the book of 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, he says, but you are a chosen, chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation, y'all. Hear me. I'm going back again because somebody ain't receiving who you are. But you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, who was once not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Mercy. Yeah. Proverbs 2 and 1 says, My son, if you receive my word and treasure my command within you, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. And so if I look at 
this word and I look at what God is saying to us that I have the word of God inside of me, then when situations come against me, what I do, I don't speak out of my emotions. I don't react based on how I feel, but I give forth the treasure outside of inside of me. So I sanctify myself daily with the word of God so that whenever the enemy thinks that he can speak, Speak up on this or in this, I give forth the word of God. The word of God says in Psalms 34 and 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. I ask you today, have you taken refuge in the Lord? Do you know that God tastes real good? And the one that tastes of him, they are blessed by him. I don't know about you, but I love tasting the word of God. I love eating the word of God because when I eat the word and when I taste the word, first I taste the word and the word tastes good. And when it tastes good, I begin to eat more of it. I've given this analogy once before that when you go into a restaurant and when the food tastes good, you want to go back there for some more. This food tastes really good. In Nahum 1 and 7, it says the Lord is good. He is a refuge in time to trouble. He cares for those who trust him. I don't know about you, but when trouble arises and when it knocks at my door, I run to the word. I don't know about you. I can't run to the phone. I can't run to a friend, but I must run to the word because the word becomes my refuge. And when the word is your refuge, then you can say word up because whatever comes out of you is going to be the word. Whatever reactions come from you, it's going to be the word because you have ran to the word. You have received the word as your refuge. See, some of us can't get this this morning because see, we get other means and other sources. But I say that the Lord God, he must be our source so that we can be his resource. Sometimes we don't understand that we are really indeed God's resource. Yeah. And the resource in which we give unto God is the source in which he placed in us. We give back to him. We are his resource. He looks for us to be resourceful. Yeah. He looks for us to bring forth his word. I don't know about you today, but I am full of the word this morning. I am God's resource. And I'm giving you the resource that you need. You don't need to know because I'm a so Dr. Deborah Nancy Lynn, when I feel, I think about it, because I might give you what I really think or feel about it. You need to know what the resource is, and the resource is the Holy Word of God. What is God saying today, Pastor? He's saying that you need to be His resource. So when someone comes to you, burning and broke down, don't give them about you, your opinion about what you think and what you ought to do. If you don't have anything to say, just don't say anything. Nor your intellect, but they need to get caught by the word of God. So when you begin to speak the word of God, someone begin to stir on the inside of them. And you know that it is not you, but it's the power source that lives inside of you. I'd rather give you his word than my word, because my word might keep you broken, broken, disgusted, hurt, beat down, and everything else, especially if this vessel is not built up. Which is the spirit of the living God. So, by the power of the living God and the resource that God has placed in me today, I'm building you up from His Word, letting you know today that you are not counted out, you are counted in, you are not rejected, you are accepted into the family of the Lord God. God says you are His treasure and He's placed you on public display. Not man, 
resource so you can be the resource of this word. Let this resonate in you. Receive this source so you can be the resource of this word. Psalms 84 and 11 says, For the Lord God is a son and he is a shield. The Lord restores favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk blameless. Oh my God! You better get this source and be the resource of this word. God says, No good thing is he withholding from me. For if I need this, I can go and get it because the source is inside of me. Resource of God. Magnify myself. Manifest yourself. The source of
It moves constantly by his 